Welcome to my channel. My name is Jewel and today I'm super excited because I'm sharing with you six new Starseed Origin markings to look for in your birth chart. We are going to be going over Lumeria Starseeds, Tellos, which we'll get to that, Polaris or Polarian Starseeds, the Blue Rays, Corvus, Cygnus, and Hadarian. So if you want to be a part of this spiritual community growing together on our sacred journeys, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you get notified when I post a new video and you can vote in the polls in my community tab on what the next topic is going to be. But without further ado, let's get into the galactic starseed history origin that you may be from um, and give you that confirmation that you may be looking for. So let's go. Okay, before we begin, I just want to say you do not need to have any of these markings in your birth chart to confirm you're a starseed. Use your intuition, follow your heart. If you read the signs and traits that you can find all over the internet, that is not what I'm sharing today. You can find those online by simply Googling the starseed that you think you are, their traits and purpose. If you resonate with them, then you're most likely that type of starseed. So this video is more for if you know what star seed you are or resonate with and you want that extra confirmation, or you have no idea where to even begin, but you know you're not from this planet and you want to be nudged in the right direction, then here you might find um, a new star seed origin or a new name that you resonate with that you can then begin your star seed awakening journey and follow down that path of research and finding like-minded individuals. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to need is your birth chart. Look into my star seed uh, playlist on my YouTube and you'll see all my star seed videos. I've gone over in depth how to sh find your birth chart and what we're going to be looking for. So I'm real quick if you're new here I'm going to show you how to get your birth chart. So you want to go to astro-charts.com and fill in all your information. You're going to put your name, your birth date, city of uh, birth, and then most importantly, your time of birth. You do need that to get the more specific uh, markings you're looking for in your chart. So once you get that info, you want to hit settings in the astro-charts and change the general settings to side reel. This is what it looks like. Make sure it says side reel. And the reason for this is because they say the side reel charts is more accurate when we look at fixed stars. And that's mainly what we're going to be going over today. And it's more focused on your past life. So where you originated from, where you're from, and then where you're going, where you might go back to after you leave this reincarnation. I've gone over in my part three video, which I will link in the description, uh, the differences between the three different charts that I've used. So you can use the tropical that's going to go over your current life right now, or you can use the draconic chart, which talks about your higher self. So I always recommend trying all three charts and seeing if you have one connection or similarity between all three. And I feel like if you do, that would confirm your origin. <laughs> so now that you have your chart, we are going to be looking at Lumoria or the Lumorians, and you've probably heard history about them, so I'm just going to do a quick overview. So Lemuria was its own continent on Earth, and it was full of peace, love, prosperity, acceptance, like oneness, basically heaven on Earth. Atlantis was another continent, which I went over at Atlantean star seeds in my part three, which is linked below. Atlantis was another continent, but they eventually became more focused on the ego and control, which was eventually led to their downfall. So definitely check out that part three video if you want to learn a little bit more about Atlantis or Atlanteans. So after a bunch of catastrophic events that occurred, Lumeria basically sunk itself into the ocean and then most of the people, the Marian people, morphed into sea creatures, so whales, dolphins, turtles, etc. But a lot of them went underground for safety. And by underground, I mean inside the earth. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about some of that today. So now that Lumerian colony who went underground, they say that they now live under or within Mount Shasta, California which is what I talked about in my Ley Lines video. So you can definitely check out that. So I'll link that above. 
if you want to look at ley lines, which would make sense that these highly advanced souls, energetic beings live on that ley line in Mount Shasta. But since Lumeria went into Mount Shasta, um, that city is now called Telos or the city of light. So you can be a Telosian starseed or a Telosian being. So basically in Lumeria or Lumerian race was a mixture of beings that came from other planets, including Sirius, specifically Sirius B, uh, Alpha Centauri, the Pallades or Palladian starseeds, uh, Vega, Lyra, also Beta Centauri, so Alpha Centauri, Beta Centauri, and more, uh, including the Hadarians, which we will talk about. So most of the Lumerians, they came to Earth and seek for better life, right? A bunch of people came to Earth and they colonized Lumeria, but they came from a, bu from a bunch of different origins, a bu bunch of different star systems. So if you are a Lumerian, you are most likely a hybrid of other origins. So from my other videos, if you're a Palladian or a Sir Sirius B or Alpha Centauri or just Centauri, you're probably hybrid Lumerian. Does that make sense? <laughs> Basically, it's just saying that you say you came from the Pallades and then you came to, you colonized Lemuria with these other beings. You are now a Palladian Lemurian hybrid. So, time for the markings if you are a Lemurian star seed. So, like I said, use my other videos to see if you align with other origins because then if you have those origins and the ones I'm going to say, you're most likely a Lemurian hybrid. What you're going to be looking for, you want to look at, um, both of these parts in your birth chart. So you want to look for 29 Taurus, exactly you want to look for 29 Taurus 58. And you want to look for a number one to two degrees below or under that number. And that still is in a, an alignment. That's still a confirmation. So you could be 27, 28, 29, 30, and 31 Taurus to have a confirmation with Lemuria. Let's continue. So also 15 Capricorn or exactly 15 Capricorn 19, 14 Cancer or exactly 14 Cancer 5, 0 in Aquarius, 20 in Libra, and 12 or 23 in Scorpio. So for example, in my uh, houses, I have a 25 in Scorpio, which is two away. So that's an alignment. So I might be a, some sort of Lumeria or Lumerian hybrid, since I'm only listing a little bit of the markings you can look for in that birth chart. Speaking of cities underground, so Lemuria, which is now underneath Mount Shasta called Telos, city of Telos, is only one of many cities that live inside Earth or underground Earth. The capital is the Shambhala city, which I discovered, and they say that there's over 120 cities within the Earth's crust. So as a group, so all the cities that are inside the Earth are called the Argartha Network or the Network of Light or Earth beings that live inside the Earth. And they say that the northern lights are reflections of inner Earth's central sun. So they say there's a sun inside. I don't know if that's the the core is the sun. I don't know. I didn't go that deep. <laughs> but when you see the northern lights, they say that's a reflection of the sun coming through because there are entrances into inner earth. So you can access them through the north and south poles. Those are the main two entrances. But there are other ones as well, which are located along earth's grid or ley lines. So I'll put that video in the description ley lines because most of them were the energy super high is like a portal or entrance into the inner earth into the city of light and all the colonies that are within there but they say at this time we cannot enter earth because we need to raise our vibration and consciousness and i read like basically if you were to go into the earth city of light our consciousness is not aligned with the high advanced beings there that we would just you know, lo start lowering theirs and just ruin their inner earth planet, basically. <laughs> so they do say inner earth beings, including the Lumerians and Telos or Telosians, will resurface when we raise our consciousness on earth as a whole. 
and they say this can be activated by making love and oneness your main focus since that is what Lumeria was all about. Speaking of raising Earth's vibration, I, now I want to talk about Polaris or the Polarian star seeds. So I did do a video about them in part three, linked below, but you guys wanted a little bit more info. So I will share a little bit more that I found. In that previous video, I gave markings, so I will go over them again. If you are a Polarian star seed from Polaris, you want to look for this in your birth chart. Number 23, 24 in Gemini, or one or two above or below. 28 to 29 in Gemini. Exactly 28, Gemini 34. Those are the main alignments for Polaris. But basically, it's the third star in the Little Dipper handle that you can find here called the North Star. So these are things you probably already know about. You can look online about traits or your mission, things like that. But I did find this cool information about Polaris that might resonate with you if you are a Polarian. So they say if you look closely, the star looks like it's pulsing. Polaris is a pulse of energy which acts like a gateway or portal to our universe. The light beings living in Polaris send down pulsing healing energy to the Arctic area of the Earth. And they will continue doing this um, until the Golden Age um, and then cover the entire Earth. So you can look at my video about portals um, or ley lines. I'll link them all below. And you can also look at the Lightworker video linked below, which talks a little bit about the Golden Age. So basically, Polaris is pulsating healing light onto the earth to help us raise our vibration, but they're mainly focused on the Arctic, and then they will spread over the rest of the world. The light beings are working to send this healing to cover the entire earth to help raise the vibration of Gaia, or Earth, or Mother Earth. From there, the healing light will help us recognize our light path and to face our true north. So basically, like, follow your true north. What's your true north is like, becoming full of light, sharing your light with others, sharing positivity and love and helping people think outside the box and think about what else we're a part of uh, on this planet. That is all I really found on Polaris just because there's so much online that you can look up yourself and that's not what I really do. Um, if there's stuff already out there that you can easily find, that's not really what I want to share. I want to share things that you might have not heard of yet or might have not discovered yet. <laughs> so let's move on while we're on the topic of light to the Blu-rays. So this is a big topic. Blu-rays also called Orophium. Or Orophium. So Blu-ray markings that you're here to raise the humanity consciousness and pave the way for new star seeds to enter the earth. So there are there is a lot of information about Blu-rays online, but I just want to share with you one of you mentioned this Blu-rays are connected with the 144,000 light workers and Archangel Michael or Aldebaran. Aldebaran, I just don't, don't know how to say that. <laughs> so check out my 144 light workers. That is connected with Blu-rays. So if you are a light worker, you may be a Blu-ray light worker. <laughs> so you're also connected with Sirius strongly. So if you are a Syrian starseed and you know that, you may also be a Blu-ray Syrian hybrid. The Blu-rays are cosmic parents of the indigo races, which I will share one confirmation if you are an indigo uh, coming up. But Blu-rays can be hybrids that come from many star systems, including... Most of them are from the feline hybrids, such as a uh, vegan or vegan or vega star system or your Lyra or Lyran, which I talked about both of those in my part one. So part one, check it out because that is where I started and I feel like I've grown a lot since then. <laughs> but that is the more in depth with a lot of your more popularly known star seeds are on that video. Also, Blu-rays are hybrids of the avian, so the bird uh, star seeds, which are actually the ancestors to the felines. And then lastly, you might be a Satian. Hopefully it's how you say it. <laughs> Hybrid if you are a Blu-ray. So these are the markings you want to look for if you are a Blu-ray. So you tend to be in between your 30s and 60s. You're 30 to 60 years old. Lots of water and air in your chart. So a lot of um, signs that are water and air. The markings include 
which I've mentioned some in my previous videos. I'll just go over a couple of them and there might be some new ones in here, but a nine in Gemini. So look for nine in Gemini or one or two above or below. 17 Aries, but exactly 17 Aries 50. 18 Taurus, but exactly 18 Taurus 11. And again, zero in Aquarius. 10, 15, 18, 21 in Capricorn. So in Capricorn, 10, 15, 18, 21, or one or two below or above. Um, you can also, this is one was kind of weird, but it said if you have any number that is exactly 13 or 14 or 15 in any sign, then that is an alignment. If you have 17 to 19 in Gemini, and then I wanted to tell you, if you're an indigo, you will have 19 Gemini or one or two above or below um, for an indigo, which are also called Nahals. Now that we've covered the main two topics, the Blu-rays and Lumerians or Tellos that I wanted to talk about, let's, and Polaris, let's move on to three more. So these you guys have mentioned that I haven't covered and I looked them up and I found some markings for you. The first one is Corvus. So if you are a Corvus starseed, um, it's connected with the Crow or Raven constellation. They are rare and do not incarnate often. And what is really cool that I found is if you are a Corvus, your twin flame or partner sign is a Hydra, which I haven't talked about like star seed twin flames. I've talked about twin flames, which you can look here to look at you and your partner or potential partners uh, chart to see if you are twin flames with markings. I've done that. But this is saying if you're a Car Corvus, your twin flame star seed origin is a hydra which is very cool and i did hydra in part three so if you want to know if you're a hydra or your twin flame is a hydra then look in the description for part three but basically um you will have both markings in each or one of your charts so one of you might have all the corvus markings one of you might have all the hydra or you both have hydra and corvus markings so keep that in mind. This is what you want to look for, for Corvus. Numbers 10, 10 through 13. So 10, 11, 12, 13 in Libra or 17 in Libra. And then in Virgo, you want to look 10 through 23. So I know that's big, a lot of numbers. So just look for 10 through 23 in Virgo. Same thing with Pisces, 10 through 23 in Pisces you're basically going to have a lot of Virgo and Pisces in your chart. And then your Midhaven, which is your MC located here, is going to be in Virgo or Pisces. And then you may also have a mystic rectangle in your chart, which I know some of you have said that you have is a mystic rectangle. So you may be a Corvus and your partner may be a Hydra. <laughs> so let me know if you guys are. That'd be super cool to find out. And then you would also be exactly 13 Libra 27 or one or two away, which is called al -Gurba, which is a royal Bahian star, Bahanian star. So that is Corvus. Let's move on to Cygnus. So if you're a Cygnusian, this is the swan constellation. There is a lot of good information online about Cygnusian star seeds. So if you are aligned or you want to know more about the swan constellation origin, then definitely Google it because there is a lot of info that I'm not sharing. I'm just giving you the markings. So if you're a Cygnusian, you will look for Aquarius and you will have 1, 14, 16, 24, and 27 in Aquarius. You will also have in Pisces a 5, 6, 27, or 28 in Pisces. Okay, and then last but not least, the Hadarian star seeds from the star system Hadar. Hadarian? Hey, Darian. The Hada Hadarian star seeds. Hadar. This was also requested from you guys, and I looked up some info. There was a lot online, like I said, of traits and mission and purpose and all this stuff and history. But I've mentioned uh, the markings, the uh, Centaurians or Centauri. If you are a Centaurian starseed, this is from my part one video, you are, that is highly connected with Hadar or the H Hadar or the Hadarians. So you're most like, you might be a hybrid or you've been to both of those star systems. 
you may be from the Beta Centauri star system, which goes back to being Lemurian. You might be a Hadarian Lemurian hybrid starseed, plus others. <laughs> Uh, but basically, what you want to look for if you are from Hidar is exactly 23 Scorpio 48, which is the Agena star, which is another name for Hidar. Um, or you can just look for 19 through 23 in Scorpio. So 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 in Scorpio. Or lastly, a 2 in Sagittarius and one or two above or below. So two in Sagittarius. So that is all I have for you guys today. I hope this was helpful for those of you who wanted a little bit more info of some of those that I've covered and then new ones that I have not covered yet. If you have any other new Starseed Origins that I have not covered yet in my part one, two, three, this is number four, and I've gone over rare ones and draconians, so make sure to see that Starseed playlist to see all of the ones that I have covered to find out if your origin is one of those or if you have a new one for me to look into. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this video. I have a lot of stuff in the works. I'm super excited, but I'm going to keep it a little surprise. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you've made it this far and you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video. Have a great day.